Okay, I am Libby Vantrese and um, welcome to the introduction to Premier Plus Two Ultra Embroidery. Um, and this is the Windows version, so it is for PCs. And I will be sharing my screen and walking you through some of the different uh, icons and elements of Premier Plus Two. The very first thing that I want to show you is the configure module. And it looks like a screwdriver and a pair of pliers. So it is where your tools are. So I'm gonna pop that up on the screen so you can see what that looks like. Um, from here, you can check your installation. You can activate your, um, subs or your Premier Plus Two so that you have access to all of the updates. You can start machine communication. You can back up your settings. You can also reset all modules. Typically at the beginning of any class of Premier Plus Two, I will ask all of the students to reset their modules so that we are all on the exact same page in terms of when we're working on a project or something like that, then it shows, um, it shows up the same for everyone as far as hoop size or different things that um, you might have changed should you, um, should you get in there and, and make some, some changes. So it doesn't hurt anything and it's just a way for all students to be together in a class. One of the most important buttons I believe on this screen is the smart update button. And that is something that you will want to go and do about once a month and make sure that you are up to date with all of the, um, all of the updates that they send out. And um, often there will be additional designs that are included in that, or there might be little bugs that have been going on that they fixed, that sort of thing. So smart update is a very important button on this screen. Um, you can restore your settings from here and you can also reset your file associations, which means that when you go into File Explorer, you can um, see um, your uh, designs instead of just seeing a little icon that looks like a P. There are several tabs up here at the top of Configure. Um, appearance is another important tab. I'm gonna click on that now. And when I do, you'll see that you can change what things look like on the screen. Um, you can show your measurements in either millimeters or inches. We typically embroider in millimeters and we quilt in inches. Um, and I know a lot of people are hesitant to use the millimeters, but it is a great way to be very accurate in your design placement and that sort of thing. You also can um, see in the program um, what the millimeters are in inches, and I will show you how to do that in just a few moments. This little ruler right here is an important uh, piece on the appearance tab. If you will get a ruler, that has millimeter measurements on it and measure this and then put that measurement in this box. That means when you print out a template, the design will be the actual size. And you will actually see on the screen things in real size. Um, everyone's computer screen is uh, different in its resolution. So while mine says 52 millimeters, yours might be 26. So don't be daunted by it being a very different number than shows up here. It should be the actual measurement of this little uh, box that looks like a ruler. Um, we also have the import tab. And so I can import, uh, when I import a design, it's going to come in and Robus and Anton is the default. You can click that drop down and change it to one of your particular thread ranges. Exporting, there are uh, a number of items on this screen. Um, probably the most important to a beginning embroiderer is right up here in the optimize for sewing. What that means is if I have three or four designs on the screen, it will combine them into one design so that my machine can read it. It'll remove any overlap. So if I put one design on top of another, I don't need the underneath uh, design to stitch out where, where it's covered by the other one. It'll take care of that for me. It will color sort. So if I have read six different times in the design, it'll sort that 
as as it's needed into uh, one one color change or maybe two. Sometimes there's a reason that you have to change because of foreground and background and that sort of thing. Um, but color sort will put all the colors together and it will also optimize the stitch length. All good things. Um, decoration, it'll put placement stitches. If you're going to put some bling on your design, if you want it to, it can either do a center placement, a line placement, or maybe you don't want to see that. You just want to free freewheel your decorations on a design. Hoop orientation, it will rotate to fit the natural hoop position. And what that means is if you have worked um, in, for instance, landscape mode, so horizontal, to get something designed on the screen, our uh, hoops go into our machine in a vertical position. So it will automatically rotate that hoop when you send it off to be stitched. Um, Multi-part hoops, that's a little more advanced, but it talks about the different ways that um, it would set up the split method for that. And some of you will have a turnable hoop and you might have to have some alignment stitches for that. This is a really cool feature down here at the bottom. When you export a design for stitching, it will automatically add the word exported to the design name. So you can always tell if you have run the design through and exported it for your machine because that word will actually show up in the design name. The last tab up here is connection. And this is um, for my SoNet, which is a cloud-based storage uh, for designs. And you can um, actually set some things up here. Okay. So I'm gonna cancel the configuration now, which is right here. Um, do notice that there is a help button down there. So if you have a question um, that you need to look something up, help is available right there. Um, so I'm gonna cancel that. And now I'm gonna open Premiere Plus 2. So give it just a second and it will open up. Some computers take longer than others. And if you click, 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 you'll have multiple versions open. So be patient once you've double clicked, watch your, watch your hourglass and know that it's coming up. Okay, so this is the um, screen that opens when you open your Premiere Plus 2. There's a lot of information on this screen. Right now with no design in here, you'll notice that most of the the items on the ribbon bar are grayed out, meaning it can't do anything if you don't have something to do it with. Um, but let's start way up at the tippy top. Um, there are little quick links up at the top. This is the Premiere Plus 2 icon indicating that you are in the embroidery module. This file folder, if you hover over these items, you will see what they are. So if you forget it, just hover with your mouse this is the insert and it tells us we can insert an existing embroidery into the current project. This is how we can add multiple designs to one workspace. The next over is a little floppy disk looks like and it is the save icon so you can save the embroidery. We can save as which just like in word processing we can save as which means we can rename something. Um, so that is a, a good tool to have. And this is the export. So there is a difference between saving and exporting. We can save a design um, as a VP4, and I like to think of VP4 file extensions as being for everyone. It allows us to save our design in multiple pieces and parts so we can get back and edit easier. Export flattens the design, translates it to your machine language, and makes it ready to go for stitch out. The next icon is to print. We can print out our embroideries and we can print templates. We can print all sorts of information about what's in there. So this is also a good, good uh, icon to have access to. This is the change hoop. There are two ways you can change hoop. You can change your hoop size right here or over here on the ribbon bar is a change hoop. So it's available two places. Um, the change hoop up here will be available to you in all of the different modules. So this one's a good one to know about. Undo, 
favorite, favorite, favorite key stroke of all times. Because if you get yourself all goofed up and you had a design set just the way you like it, you can back up multiple times by clicking on the undo. Sometimes we undo too far and we can redo to put back what we accidentally took away that we didn't mean to. This is our life view. So we can see our projects in life view and it gets the hoop and the grid out of the way. So you can see it without all that uh, external noise, if you will, in your way. This is the design player. When we have a design on the screen, we can click on design player and it will play through the embroidery as though it's being stitched out. So you can actually see what's gonna happen first, second, third, et cetera. Um, we can customize our quick access toolbar if there are other things or different ways you want it set up. That is also an option. So this is called the quick access toolbar up here. The next row down is our tabs. So these are the different tabs um, available to you up at the top of the screen. I'm going to click on the file tab right now. And if you notice some of the same icons are here that are up here on our quick link. So I can open a file, I can open a new window, I can open a new project, I can save, save as, export, I can export applique pieces. So there are some additional um, icons here. I can export a decoration template, I can send the embroidery that's on the screen to a connected machine if I have it cable connected. I can um, send it to my files or my machine. I can send to my SoNet. For anyone who has a machine that is SoNet enabled, you can actually send directly to your machine. Um, it, insert. I can insert an existing project into my current project. Remember the insert was also up top. Here's my print button. Uh, recent, I can open a recently used embroidery. I can set up my preferences here and I can exit. So the file tab is rich with um, lots of icons, lots of activities that you can do, but a lot of those are up here as quick links. If I go to the home tab, it gives me back the screen that we saw just a moment ago. There is a wizards tab. This is an awesome tab that you can get into. You can create express monograms from here. You can turn an embroidery into an endless embroidery. This is ideal for if you wanted to put a design all the way around the bottom of a tablecloth or something like that. And it'll add marks so you can keep relining up the design and send it all the way around that tablecloth. The Express Design Wizard allows us to turn um, clip art and things like that into stitches. So Express Design is a nice wizard for when you want to convert artwork or something like that into stitches. Photo Stitch we can take a photo and turn it into stitches through the photo stitch wizard. There's a word sculpt wizard in which you can take a shape, perhaps a coffee cup or something like that. And then you can fill it up with all sorts of words about coffee and word sculpt will help automatically do that. There's the quilt block wizard where you can create a filled or outline a quilt block automatically there's all sorts of settings in here. Um, you can use stippling, you can do crosshatch fills, you can use all sorts of different motifs. Um, the quilt block wizard is a great way to quilt around embroideries. You can do a family tree with the family tree wizard. Um, and yeah, that is pretty self-explanatory there. Project in the Hoop is one of my favorite wizards because you can create projects that are completely stitched out in the Hoop. I'm actually gonna click on this one and show you some of the different things you can do. You can do a book cover. Um, there's all different styles. And most importantly, in all of the Project in the Hoop wizards, there's PDF instructions, meaning it will tell you how the stitch out is going to work. So we have book covers, card holders, key rings, 
luggage tags, novelties, passport covers, and phone cases. And in each one of these different categories, uh, I'm just going to pop up the key ring, or well, I hit the card holder. Let me do key ring. If we look down here and click on the style, there are all different styles of key rings. And when you click on them, it'll show you a preview of them. Um, and again, we have the PDF instructions down here that will show us how that will all stitch out. And then last but not least in the wizard is the split project wizard. This is a delightful wizard in that if your project is too big for your hoop, um, the, your largest hoop, you can run it through the split project wizard and actually um, set it up so that it will stitch out with multiple hoopings and it will put markers in the project for relining up when you have to move your fabric. Okay, so that's the wizards tab. The next one is the Encore tab. Encore is very fun in that it will allow you to create repeating designs in either a circle shape or some sort of another shape that you choose, a line shape or all the way around the hoop. So Encore will, the software will automatically space things for you based on the number of repeats and some of the choices that you make. The next is the letter tab. This is probably the first place everybody goes um, because we all uh, love to put lettering on our projects. So in the letter tab, we have the gallery viewer, which you just click that down arrow and then you can see that we have multiple different uh, fonts that we can use. These are all applique uh, fonts here. Then we have what is called children fonts and there's all different uh, lettering in here. Then um, this next one is called display and there's a lot of different options here as well. We have effects, we have elegant, foam lettering. So this is the puffy foam that you often see on um, collegiate sweatshirts and stuff where the letters have dimension and you can actually use puffy foam underneath the lettering to, to give it that. We have some fun uh, fonts, futuristic fonts, modern fonts, monograms. These are some of the monogram fonts that are available to you. My fonts, you can actually create fonts from your, um, any font that is on your computer, in, say in your word processing. I have created an Arial font at some point and also a Californian, um, pull that out of my lettering. You can also import fonts that you have purchased on CD and those will live right here in this My Fonts as well. And so you can see that there are lots more uh, fonts in here. So you can scroll in through here anytime and see some of the different ones and use those as you see fit. So lettering, um, we have, again, the gallery viewer is right here. It's this little drop down arrow. And after you choose a font, uh, say for instance, uh, let's just choose Romano. If I were to uh, want to put my name on something, I would select the font, it shows up in the viewer. And then in the letters box, I type what I want to appear. I can choose my size. I can choose the shape of the lettering. If I do a drop down arrow here, you can see all the different shapes that that would take. I'm gonna leave it as a straight bar right now. Some other options here, uh, alignment. You can left justify center or right justify. This has to do with your spacing between lines. I'm gonna click apply so you can see what that looks like on the screen. So there is my name. So basically you choose your font, you type in what you want, and then you hit apply. If I were to um, want to say something else that had multiple lines, I could do that. Let me pull this up and out of the way. Oops. I do, I just hit enter to go to the next line is and enter my passion. 
when I hit apply because I am on centered text, it will center it in the middle of the screen and all of the words will be centered. So that is uh, just a quick, how do I put lettering on my screen? Remember, you choose your font, you type in what you want, and you hit apply, okay? All right, so I'm gonna take that away. I need to read that also. Oops, I have to pick it first and delete. All right, the next uh, tab up at the top is super design. And super designs are embroideries that you own. Um, you own lots and lots of embroideries because you chose to purchase Premier Plus Two. So over here is the category. Right now I'm on animals. So if I drop, pull this drop down or click on the drop down arrow, it shows me all of the animals that are in my screen or in my system. So if I wanted to embroider one of these animals, I simply click on it. Let's look at this fish, it looks kind of fun. Notice it is now highlighted. Again, I can make changes and do some things, but I, I hit apply, there's my fish on the screen, okay? So I'm gonna take that back away. Um, we have lots of categories in our super designs. We have animals, applique, borders, buttonholes, cartoons, celebrations, child style, corners, effects, fantasy, flowers, leaves, you can see all of them there by just scrolling through them. I'm going to choose the all category. And again, my animals are first, so they show up. But now when I click my drop down arrow right here for the gallery, I can then scroll through all of these different designs in all of the categories. The categories are alphabetical and then there are designs within them. So we have lots of applique designs. Here are the borders, all different kinds. We have all sorts of different decorative buttonholes, cartoon characters, celebrations, child style, there's corners, there's felting techniques. Um, twin needle techniques, wing, wing needle techniques and embroideries. So you can take a look at all of the different designs, but be aware that you do own a lot of designs and they are in the super designs category. So I'm just kind of scrolling through there. Um, the next tab up here is frame. So there are all kinds of frames that you can put around things. And again, every one of these has a gallery viewer and it's that drop down arrow, which shows you all of the different designs that are in the tab. We also have flourishes. And as you can see, there are different flourishes available to put above or below lettering or anything else that you would choose. The next one is border. I can set up borders around designs or around the hoop. I have all different stitch options that I can stitch those out in. I can add appliques. I can use motifs, lots of different things available in the border tab. The applique tab also allows us to turn things into an applique if I had a design on the screen. The decoration tab allows us to place individual Right, um, crystals and things like that sequins on a design so we can see what they look like. And then it will actually allow us to add stitches so that we know just where we wanna put those when we get ready to do that. The modify tab, oops, sorry. Um, you have to have a design, but you can go in there and change size and angle and things like that when there is a design on the screen. My view tab, gives me the opportunity to show the grid, which I always work with my grid on, but you could turn it off by simply clicking there. And now there is no grid. Um, so show grid, I can change the size of my grid. It's currently at 10 millimeters, but if I wanted it to be larger or smaller, depending on what I was working on, if it would help me, I could do that. I have a measuring tool 
I can change my background with my background wizard. I can actually put um, a garment on the screen that I, where I wanted to see where something would stitch out. I can put a quilt block on, um, or I can just put a different type of fabric on the screen. Um, I have 3D view, realistic 3D and 2D view. So there are different view modes. Um, that you can select. If I go to realistic, you can see now the work area turned light, but the hoop got out of my way and I don't have that grid. So I can change my, my view. 2D um, gives me the hoop. Uh, you would have to have a, a design on the screen to really have that show up. I can change my hoop size here also. And um, the design panel, which is over here, I can it's set up to show, which I definitely would want that on 95% of the time. Um, but this is a place where you can turn that on and off. And again, you have a help, uh, help tab, which will take you into um, content specific help. So when you click on help, typically you can get, it, it'll bring up something about what you're working on. I'm gonna go back to the home tab. Uh, lots, of, lots of information up here in all of these different tabs. This is the ribbon bar. And when we went to different tabs, it changed because it was specific to the tab that we were in. One more, uh, actually two more places on the screen that I want you to be aware of. Down here at the bottom are links to the different features, or the I'm sorry, the different modules in Premiere Plus 2. So you can hover over them to see what they are. This is Premiere Plus 2 Embroidery, which is what we're in. Remember, that's the icon in the upper left corner of the screen as well. The next one over is Card Shop, and you can actually create cards by going into the Card Shop module. The next one are the little scissors, and that is our Modify module. Remember, there was a Modify tab at the top of the screen the modify module is a whole nother module where you can really get in and work with your designs and change them around. The next one is the design aligner. So you can arrange and split an embroidery for stitching out in any hoop. The next one over is the little flower and that's our create uh, module. And the express design wizard that we looked at earlier gives you uh, kind of an automatic digitizing sort of result, whereas in this one, we, we can really uh, set things up specifically to the way we want them. The next module is sketch. So you can actually draw your own stuff if you're an artist. And then we have photo stitch, um, another, another way to get into that. We have a cross stitch module where we can create cross stitch. And here's our family tree thread cache. Thread cache is um, a way that you can actually set up and record your, your threads that you have on hand. You can set up a My Threads area in, in this particular module and um, you can access that from your phone. So when you're at the store, you can actually see whether or not you have the thread that you need at home. This is our, the configure. You'll notice I have um, Premiere Plus as an embroidery module down in my taskbar. And I also have configure down here because those are two that I use all the time. The next one is accessories. So if you had some sort of an accessory, you could attach it here. This is Send Express. So I can send to a connected embroidery machine um, by clicking on that module. And then the next one over is the MySoNet cloud-based storage. Okay, so those are all of our, our icons and that sort of thing. In the center of the hoop is my work, or center of the screen is my work area. And I see a hoop here. I have um, corners, you can see kind of the blue. My design has to be inside of those corners in order for me to uh, stitch it out. You can't stitch out something that doesn't fit in your hoop. Um, and over here on the right hand side is the design panel and we'll talk more about that in, in a moment, but when I have a design on the screen, this gives me information about it. So those are all of your icons and what they mean. 
So now I'm going to take you through um, a bit of an exercise so that you have an opportunity to see some of these things light up and know what they do mean. Okay, so the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change my hoop. So I'm gonna click on change hoop. I am going to use a universal hoop for today because um, this would be the same for everyone if I were teaching a class. If you click the drop down arrow here, you will find your machine manufacturer and you can select for that um, so that you are actually using uh, a branded hoop when you're designing. The hoop size is the next item down and I am going to use a hoop size of 240 by 150. Now you would select the size hoop that you own when you're designing. So I'm going to do the universal large hoop number two, which is the 240 by 150. And I am going to put it in the natural rotation rather than rotated. Rotated puts it horizontal for me. Natural will put it upright. And you see that there's a preview here. And I am going to say, okay. All right, so now we have an upright hoop. Uh, it is 150 by 240. You can see the hoop size here, and we're going to insert a design. So I'm gonna come up here to my file folder that says insert. And now I am going to need to go to um, my samples. So I have a lot of designs. So hopefully this won't be uh, too daunting for you, but for you, you're going to go to this PC over here on the left. Then we all go to documents because that is where Premiere loads all of its samples. So I'm going to go to documents and I'm going to double click that. And then I'm going to go to the Premiere plus two folder. So I'm going to double click Premiere plus two to open it. And you'll see that I have samples. You, will, you should have, if you're brand new to this, guides, my designs, my pictures, samples, and system backup. I got a little extra junk in here right now. But I'm going to open samples so I can either double click it or highlight it and click open either way. So there are the samples. Now we have samples for all of those modules that I showed you earlier that are at the bottom of your screen. We are going to go to Premiere Plus 2 EMB, which is Premiere Plus 2 Embroidery. And I'm gonna open that up. And then I have pics, folders, which means pictures. I can't embroider pictures. So always remember when you want a stitchable file, you need to go into either the stitch folder or the stitch to folder. I'm going to stitch to today and I'm opening that up. All of these folders are jam packed full of designs. So you're gonna wanna explore those. I'm going to butterflies and bugs and it shows me all of the designs that are in my butterflies and bugs samples. You own all of these. They will be in your butterflies and bugs folder as well. If for any reason you get in here and you see something that looks like this, which is completely unhelpful because I've just got the icon and it does not show me my designs, this little uh, icon right here, if you click the drop down arrow, you can choose large icons, extra large icons, whatever you like. I'm gonna choose, choose large and now I can see all of my designs. Okay, so the design that I want to insert is the ladybug. So I'm gonna double click that and it puts it on my screen. Now that it is on my screen, I have information over here in my design panel. It is 5,761 stitches. It tells me that it is 55.8 millimeters wide and 56 millimeters high. If you're not a metric kind of person, if you hover over the millimeters, it will tell you the inches, 2.197 inches tall or wide, and it is 2.205 inches wide. So you can see that. It tells me the name, where, where I found it. 
Um, and so here is my design. It loaded it right in the center of the screen. If I hold down my left mouse button somewhere in the square, I can move it to wherever I want it to go within the screen. Okay, so now it has a box around it, meaning that it is the active embroidery and the square boxes mean that it is inside my hoop and it's stitchable. If I drag it to where it is not inside the, hoop, the work area on the hoop, notice that those corners turn to circles, meaning it can't be stitched right now. I'm gonna bring it back into the hoop. The little triangle on the side and on the top allow me to mirror the design. So if I put my cursor over one of those triangles, it changes itself to a double ended arrow and I click and it will mirror the design side to side if I use the one on the side. And if I use the one on the top, it will mirror it from top to bottom. So it'll turn it upside down. Okay, this little um, circle in the center with the crosshair in it is the center point of the design for rotation. If I put my cursor over that, it turns to uh, kind of a plus sign. People accidentally drag that out of the center sometimes. Sometimes you want to, but it didn't move the design. It moved the rotation point. What does that mean? Well, what that means is if I come over here to the circle that's on the right hand side and I put my cursor over that, you see it turn into a, a circle arrow. And if I hold down my left mouse button and I drag the design, it will rotate around the point that I moved outside of the design. So if I do that and I, and I didn't mean to do that, I can simply do an undo to get the design back where it belongs if I click in the design, or I'm sorry, if I click off the design and back into it, it puts that center point back. So now if I grab my circle, I can rotate the ladybug right where it is to change its direction. Okay, so for some reason, this ladybug has purple dots. I have no idea why you would put purple dots on a ladybug. So if I come over here to my design panel and I hover over my different thread colors, you will see the color change on the ladybug indicating what that color is. So when I hover over the red, see how it turned yellow? That shows you where that red's gonna stitch. If I come down to the next one, it shows me that this is some of my shading. And if I come to the next one, there's my dots. Well, let's say that I want my ladybug's dots to be pink. So if I double click on that color, so I'm just gonna left mouse click twice, and I am going to then go into my color bar. So we have um, thread range up here at the top, and it says show my thread ranges, or you can show all thread ranges. So you can add threads to the my thread range, indicating that those are threads that you own, or if you need to find a thread range that doesn't show up there, if you click show all thread ranges, they're in here, uh, most all of them, and you can choose what you have and um, then select colors from that. I'm gonna leave it just at the default of Robus and Anton. I have quick colors, so if I wanted to change it to a hot pink, I could just click on my quick color for hot pink, or I can come in here and choose the exact color that I want. So if I know I own color number 2261, I can choose that and see what it will look like in my ladybug. And I can say, okay. And so now I have hot pink um, for the color of the ladybug. Okay, all right. So that's how we change a thread color. Um, the next thing, if I want to see this little ladybug up a little closer um, view-wise, but I don't want to change its size, 
Right down here under the design panel is a zoom bar. So I can click on the plus sign and keep making that a little bigger. So I can get it up here so I can really see what that ladybug looks like, what the stitches look like and that sort of thing. Once I've done that and I'm ready to see my whole hoop again, right next to the zoom slider is a zoom to fit. So I can click on that and I'm back to seeing my whole screen. This little magnifying glass is a handy tool as well. If I click on that, notice how my cursor turns into a magnifying glass. I can actually hold down my left mouse button up to the left of this, drag a box around my ladybug, and it zooms in for me. And then I can again come back to here and click zoom to fit. If I want to add another ladybug or another design to my screen, I can go back up here to insert. It's going to take me back to where I was um, typically, so I didn't have to wind my way into samples. But remember, we went this PC. This is your path, if you will. We went into Documents. We went into Premiere Plus 2. We opened up samples, then we opened up Premiere Plus 2 embroidery. We went into the Stitch 2 folder and we're looking at our butterflies and bugs. So if I want to add a bumblebee to my screen, another design, I can double click that and there is now a bumblebee. I have two designs on the screen. The active design has a box around it, and that's what is in my design panel right now, is the uh, active design. If I want to see or change colors on my ladybug, I simply click on that. That becomes the active design. So two, two designs on the screen. If I want to change the size of my ladybug, my bee is larger than my ladybug, maybe I want my ladybug to be a little bit bigger, I can click on that. If I grab a corner handle and drag, you'll notice that the stitch count does not change. Whoops, I'm sorry, grab that guy. So if I make it bigger, it's still 5,761 stitches. If I make it little teeny tiny, it's still 5,761 stitches. That will break a needle, promise. So I'm going to undo those size changes, both of them, and show you that to change the size and have the system go ahead and redo the stitch count for you, um, you can do that. The ladybug is selected. I'm going to click resize. Now my handles are blue and I can make the lady, whoops, I can make the ladybug bigger and notice that my stitch count changed. So the software has compensated and added stitches so that it won't be see-through. And even more importantly, should I make it smaller, it will also eliminate some stitches for me. So always turn on resize and then change the size of your design so that you get the correct number of stitches for the size that you have. Okay, I'm gonna undo that and put him back. If I hold down, notice I can really distort this ladybug and make it look very, very silly. If I hold down the shift key on my computer and drag, it maintain, oh, I'm sorry, not shift, control, oops, wrong one, start over. The control key, hold down the control key on your computer and then grab a hold of a corner and change the size. Notice it keeps its proportion. I'm holding the control key and I'm holding my left mouse button and I'm changing the size and it maintains proportion. Okay, when you're finished resizing, go ahead and click on resize to turn it off. Notice it's got a yellow box behind it. If I turn that off, now I am 
I've set, oh, I landed right back on the same size, oh, quite by accident. Okay, so I can move the ladybug by just left mouse clicking and drag. I can move the bumblebee by clicking on it and then moving him around. Um, if I get them just where I want them, and I know I like them here and here, I can do a select all, which turns them into a temporary group. Now I can see all of my colors over here and I can move them as a group because I've done a select all. There are orange handles indicating that it is a group and um, they are together now, all right? So if <clears throat> I'm happy with all of that, I can combine this into one design. So over here, I can click on combine. I can combine all. And now this is a single design. I can also, we've got 13 colors right now. Um, I can do a color sort. I don't know, well, the blacks might be the same. If I do a color sort, uh, they must not have been the same, okay. Uh, it would reduce the number of colors for me if there were same colors. And I could change colors. So I believe color number 11, yeah, those are his antenna. And that is sulky, that's what happened. The uh, bumblebee came in as a sulky uh, design, sulky thread, whereas the other one was Robus and Anton. So if I change, this is Robus and Anton 2266 radiant red, I can change the color of the antenna. Uh, and I can say, nope, I want you to be Robus and Anton. And I can say, I want you to be 2266. And I can say, okay. And now if I do a color sort, I think I grabbed the wrong color when I did that. Somehow I did, I changed the wrong thing. Robus and Anton, I can find thread number 2266, say, okay and now do a color sort. And it did not sort that in with that first red because that red needs to go on top of the black of his face. So the system decided not to combine those two colors, even though they're the same, because it needed to um, stitch out in a certain order. Okay. All right, if I want this design that I've combined centered in my hoop. I can come up here to alignment and say center in hoop and it puts it in the middle. The other uh, layout option up here is this move into hoop. So if I want it over on the side, notice my uh, handles just turn to circles, meaning I'm outside of the hoop. I can click on move into hoop and it will ooch it in so that it will stitch out in the work area. Okay, uh, if I now want to save this design, I can come up here to my save, or I can click on file and click save. And it gives me the opportunity to name it at this point. And you have to put it where you want it. So I usually save all of my designs in the Premiere Plus 2 My Designs folder. It took me there automatically. It says the file name is untitled.vp4. VP4 again is for everyone. So do save all of your designs as a VP4 first. I'm going to name it Ladybug, but, whoops. A, bug, and B. And I am going to save that in, uh, in this My Designs folder. So I say save. Notice now up here at the top, instead of saying untitled, it says Ladybug and B. So it has been named. Now if I'm ready to stitch this design out, I want to export it. So export is right here. It's the floppy disk with the arrow pointing out, or I can come to file and the same exact icon is right here, export either way. And 
it says, what file format do you want? So let's take a look at that. All right, so the top file format, again, it says Husqvarna Viking FOF because that's the creators of the software, but VP4 is the working file and it is for everyone. So looking down through here, you must pick the file format for your machine. If you own a Viking or a FOF, you'll want to use the VP3 file format. If you own a Brother Baby Locker Bernina, PES is your format, or PEC. I tend to want to use the one that is highest in the list that works. If you have a Singer, it's this .xxx. If you have an earlier Viking, this is the file. Uh, coming on down, genomes are .jef, you would select this one, or .sew. This Melco expanded .exp works for Bernina. Um, it is a designer, um, a digitizer format, and therefore it works with a lot of machines. Um, and there are some others down here as well. So let's pick uh, a FOF machine today and note Notice are optimized for sewing. Um, it's going to color sort for me. It's going to optimize my stitch length, which is great. Uh, decoration we don't really need. Uh, and hoop orientation, it's already in the correct orientation. I'm going to say OK. Now, look at what the file name did. Ladybug NB exported vp3, meaning it will be in my machine's language. If I had a USB stick in my computer, it would show up right here, and that is where I would want to export it to if I'm taking it to my uh, machine. I tend to do all of my exported designs in my designs folder uh, and keep a copy of the exported one, and then I can copy it onto the USB stick, but you can do it either way. So if I say export, I have now exported the design. So if I go into my file explorer and I go to documents, remember we're this PC documents, Premiere plus two, the my designs folder. If I go all the way over here near the end, we should see my Uh, design that I just saved and it was, oh, Ladybug. I'm sorry, couldn't remember the name of it. Ladybug and B, VP4, Ladybug and B exported. When I'm in File Explorer, if I want this view to show up and show me my designs, I change that view right here. View, choose large icons or extra large icons or whatever you prefer. And then if I scroll down here to my ladybug and B, there they are, ladybug and B, BP4, ladybug and B, B exported BP3. So that is how we export our designs. I create a lot of folders and keep all of my designs in those folders. All right. Um, we can actually have two copies of Premiere open at the same time. If I come over here and I say file, new window, don't do new because new will take away what I already have. I'll click new window and it will open up a second copy of Premiere for me to work in. So just as a reminder, we have designs available to us in the insert. We can go to samples or we have designs here in super design. I'm gonna to go to super design and I'm going to put the cat on the screen. I'm going to apply it. There's my kitty cat. Ooh, it's kind of a mean looking cat. Um, I'm gonna move my cat up here into the corner I have green handles right now. The super designs are resizable. Um, you don't have to use the resize button. I am gonna make him a little smaller because he's scary looking. 
So I'm gonna drag him down to a little smaller size. Oh, that's nicer. Um, my stitch count changed. And um, if I go down here to the bottom and I hover, you can see I have two uh, versions of Premiere running at the same time. If I want to add my kitty cat to the screen that has the ladybug and the bumblebee on it, I can go back to my home tab. I can click copy. It puts my kitty cat down here in my clipboard. Then I can come down here to my premiere and switch windows. So I'm gonna go over to where my ladybug and my bee are by left clicking there. Notice that my kitty cat stayed on my clipboard and I can come up here and say paste. And it put the kitty cat on into that design as well. So that is how you can work on multiple designs and copy things back and forth from one workspace to another. Um, if I need to move, need or want to move between my designs, um, I can click on the other design back and forth that way. Sometimes we will get a design that is sort of kind of, it's hard to move from one to the other. Like if I click on the cat right now, I can't get it. I could if I clicked right at the bottom. But right up here is previous design and next design. And that allows me to move back and forth easily because right now it's the ladybug and bumblebee that are selected. So I can say next design. Now I have my box around my cat and I can move my cat to where I want it to go. Um, so that is a pretty good overview of all of the different things that are in your ribbon bar on your tabs. Uh, the one thing we didn't talk about was rotate. With a design selected, I can rotate it in 45 degree increments. So that is another way to move the design around. Um, and again, your change hoop is here. Um, modify design. If I click on that, I can change my size here. And remember, if I uh, hover, over the size, it gives me the millimeters in inches, which is very handy. The other piece with this size button that I will share with you before we finish up today is if I want to change that size and I know that I want this to be three inches, I can type in the inches and it will convert it to millimeters for me. So I'm typing in a three, then I'm going to put in the inch, um, it's the quotation mark on your keyboard, three inches, and I press tab. Notice it converted it to 76 millimeters for me. So it'll do the math. And you can say, okay. And there's my little kitty cat at a new size. All right. Um, I hope you thoroughly enjoy your new Premiere Plus 2 software, or maybe this is a review for you. It is a very, very, very rich software in what it will do. Um, lots of classes are available uh, to learn even more, and the best way to learn it is to use it. Have a wonderful day, and thanks so much for watching.